If you burn something and study the flame, you can see what elements are, are fed later and, and even look at... Oh, there we go, Emily. No more, no more, please. Naturally the thereafter, so I'll give a brief thing to you and what to expect from it. The Nightclaim really is composed of two pieces. We've got the rover nope, we lost and the descent stage. Oh, we're starting to get really kind of Over infectiously exciting in here. I'm terrified and smiling. Dare mighty things by munching it. Coming in, we have two well, orders. But even more important, just a second, uh, is you uh, have this powered on, according to Emily Lactawalla, who's in the heat of the So look, I got audio. I got warning that we're seeing the transition. Two two minutes now. Uh, the system should be configured shortly. Odyssey come, Odyssey come. And we're seeing carrier a lot. But at so, 10 uh, 16, from the and and the fire and the, the Primark landing stops. engines. Um, and then 14 minutes later, so we're about to fire those engines. And uh, we are here, here's, here's where it gets very. Yeah, entry are signal passers by the donut of the crew stage. There's there's so much riding on this. I the the thing that that, that hurts. So they're waiting for the back shell to separate right now. We are in our place. They're in our place. So the the. <laughs> Touchdown! <laughs> Touchdown! <laughs> Can you confirm, Amy, is the uh, the rover? <laughs> Can we turn it around? <laughs> Amy, can you turn your computer around so we can see it? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Mars. Oh. So you can see the sky, you can see the horizon, you can see differences in color. It looks like you can see the wheel in the bottom. Also probably dusty. All right, now this Jason. This is amazing. Definitely seeing surface there. Night wind scared an opportunity on those guys when they landed. They got a lot more pictures very quickly because those missions were designed as 90-day sprint missions. This is not a sprint. This is a full march a year, two Earth years. And it's going to take them quite some time before the real science and the real images start coming in. It'll be a couple of weeks at least. Chandler, give us a rough idea, I'm so happy to be talking about this, of the timeline from here on out now. What happens now? Well, it, it depends, of course, on everything working perfectly, but in the next couple of days, they're going to be raising up the, the head, locking it into place, uh, checking out all of the equipment, rolling away, and starting their exploration. So it, it's going to be happening over the next few days. Hopefully the head will snap into place immediately. That's always the most terrifying at this stage. Because, um, of course, you don't want the head to get locked down because that makes smooth and difficult. And they, of course, lose all the time. So when will we see the descent movie? Uh, the descent movie we should be getting tomorrow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, great. Look at that. You're seeing the shadow. Yeah. So there's, a, there's a lot of crying in the right now. Yes. There, there's a lot of people breathing easier. When, one of the comments I saw was, was someone who, who thought I was kind of harsh for making the, these people will be out of a job statement. Well, I unfortunately or fortunately, I love my job, but a lot of my funding comes from missions. And you don't get your check until the mission gets where it needs to get. They hold on to the money and don't release the mission that they so it, it's absolutely terrifying. I've been in the position of not knowing if I'd have a paycheck the next month because I didn't know if LRO was going to work. And that's just scary. So all of these people have a whole lot to be proud of. They beat the curse.
Oh, so apparently we've maxed out all the comments on both Google Plus and on the uh, on the event page. So, so the way Google Plus works is we only have a 500 comment limit. So we filled the one on the event page. We filled the one on the Google Plus page. So now, if you want to comment, uh, you can comment on Twitter using the hashtag Mars Hangout, or you were gone. or on YouTube. So you can still comment on YouTube. All I think right. that can well, go on forever. We are very pleased now to have with us the administrator of back NASA, in, uh, Charlie Bolden. Back in 1990, Congratulations. I was. Um, I had just hooked up with Hubble right before lunch. Incredible. Then I was in grad school and I needed a what PhD like project. And uh, my advisor said, Here's, we're doing something on Hubble. And I said, absolutely, I want it. And that thing launched a couple of weeks later. And it was nail-biting and hair-pulling and it launched and everything was successful. And then we got the pictures right. And Hubble wasn't focused correctly. And then it was two years of maddening work for the nation. It's a huge day for all of our partners that have something on, you know, on curiosity, and it's a huge day for the American people. So, as I told people as we went around earlier tonight, everybody in the morning should be sticking their chest up saying, that's my rover on Mars, because it belongs to all of us. Well, that's what I'll be doing tomorrow, Well, you should be. Well, you should be. Well, thank you so much for dropping by. I know that you are getting ready for a news conference. We are. We are so glad. I've done education public outreach on, I'm not even sure I'm on Thank you very much. Thanks for that. For carrying us through this whole thing. And every time they launch. The public it able is gut-churning, horrifying. You right. cannot stand the tension. In a moment tension. we will have Dr. Charles Alachi, but let's get back the, the for a bit. The reaction we're seeing in the mission control room, man, you know, <laughs> you make fun of nerds, you make fun of geeks, other engineers, other scientists, uh, you know what, we're humans. We are just as loaded with emotions as anybody else. And to have your entire life invested in a single moment that is out of your control once things are in motion like that it is, is beyond description. And so what we've done here today is the very best of what we can do. Very best. Okay. And and they've gone through such a, a roller coaster of they had to develop All right, it is my completely new technologies that hadn't been tested before. They they went through congressional threats. They went through even the mainstream media. No offense, Miles, I don't think you're involved. Even the mainstream media um, attacked in three dimensions. They can do 3D stills. Because they have a 100 millimeter lens and a 37 millimeter lens, they have to do, do multiple images in order to get 3D images. But you can't capture movies doing that. So that zoom camera that Jim Cameron had designed and was pushing NASA to put on board, um, it was a matter of money and just not enough time to get it. That, that, what, what is the next big mission? Uh, Maven is an atmospheric mission. Yeah, I was, I was talking about a lander. Okay. Is that the methane um, detection mission? I believe so. I, I have to admit, I usually don't invest too highly in missions until they've launched. Um, just because I, I got my heart set on, on Terrestrial Planet Finder and then it got canceled. Indefinite hold. In, indefinite hold, that is, that is true. Now, now one, one thing that needs to be pointed out is one of the reasons that they don't uh, have too many video cameras and things like that on these missions is getting the data back is, is, is hard. Um, so, so you have little rover on the surface of the planet that does have the ability to send information all the way back to Earth. Um, but it prefers to send it up to Mars Odyssey, uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, um, Mars Express, to use one of those three missions to use what's called a bent pipeline. Then once that data starts coming back, we have to capture it here on the planet Earth, which means we need to use radio receivers here on Earth. The signal's not that strong, so we have to be using pretty big radio dishes. And that gets expensive quickly. So they can't always get as much data back as they'd like. This is particularly a problem for missions like Cassini, where really the big holdup is, is how much data can we afford to bring back to Earth. Raise and small
All right. So do you have any more questions? Um, I think we're done. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> we now have to wait eight hours for the next uh, the next information to come from the Curiosity rover. So I think at this point, we're just. I was I was actually anticipating ninety minutes of pointless speculation. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm really I glad we did that. But now that. we got uh, absolute confirmation and photographs from the surface of Mars and the Curiosity rover. So we are done. <laughs> I gotta say. <laughs> This I thought so we got the images already. I'm writing a story about what I just experienced. <laughs> so, so where is everyone's next story going to appear? I'm, I'm doing a, a photo retrospective of this whole weekend on Motherboard, um, including the bizarre Mars party from last night. Um, so those, I've got a whole whack of pictures I'm going to put together. Um, that's, well, that's my big one that I'm... Amy, what does your press pass say? It says uh, Credentials U.S. Actually, nobody has an affiliation on their... Oh, really? Badges. Okay, well, then you're free. You're, yeah. you're scot-free. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really know what, what the deal is in terms of who I'm, you know, technically affiliated with and where these things have to come up. <laughs> he's I hear checking they were his out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, I'm he's a, foreign. I'm a foreign national. <laughs> I you're noticed the different colors and realized wow. that it's, uh, green is NASA, yellow is U.S., and red is international. These aren't Homeland Security colors, are they? I mean, red and, and yellow. <laughs> they, they actually, at NASA <laughs> facilities, always red badge for nationals. So if you're a, uh, even if you're a resident alien, you, you get red badged. Yeah, when I was at, uh, when I was there for the shuttle launch, uh, it was a really difficult time to get into, uh, like, into the Kennedy Space Center because I'm Canadian. And uh, so everyone else was just zipping through and, and, and we were, as Canadians, we weren't allowed to do a bunch of things that the Americans are allowed to do. So, so for example, we weren't allowed to go to certain areas within the facility without an escort. And right. it, was, it was crazy. So I had to keep asking for escorts to take me to various <laughs> places at Kennedy Space Center. Once you get the right kind of escort. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, just, you know, and, and people just kept apologizing that they had to do this because as a, you know, as a Canadian, as a foreign national. But then, Amy, yeah. you're Canadian, too, so how, what's going on here? My mom's from Maine, so I've actually had U.S. citizenship I since I was five months old. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a dual citizen, but because I was born in Canada, it does throw people off sometimes. Um, I always bring my passport as my identification, because you can't not have that if you're an American citizen. So it's, it's um, yeah, I did... Still have to when I did research at the NASA archives in Washington. I did have to wait two weeks for security clearance because I was born out of the country. But when I got there, it was really easy. I just had my passport, and they didn't give me any trouble. There we go. Okay. Well, why don't I wind this all down? So then, uh, so yeah. how can people find out more about everybody involved? Um, let's start with you, Amy. Where can people find out more? Oh, sorry, me. Um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, you can go to amyshiratitle.com, just my whole name, dot com. Um, my blog, Vintage Space, is there, and you can get links to basically everywhere else. I'm at Discovery News, Ian, um, <laughs> <laughs> among others, and you can find all my stuff. And Google Plus, I do a lot out there because it's good people out there. So, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Dr. Pamela Gay, where can we find out more? <laughs> you can follow me at CosmoQuest.org where I will engage you in NASA citizen science projects and learning about this universe that we all share and both fill in success. Landing the Mars Science Laboratory rover, Curiosity, on the surface of the Red Planet was by any measure the most challenging mission ever attempted in the history of robotic planetary exploration. And if anybody has been harboring doubts about the status of U.S. leadership in space, well, there's a one-ton automobile-sized piece of American ingenuity on the, uh, that is uh, and it's sitting on the surface of Mars right now and it should certainly put any such doubts to rest. President Obama has challenged America, as Administrator Bolden just said, to send humans to Mars in the 2030s. And Curiosity is going to provide critical information about the Red Planet and what our astronauts will find once they arrive. The administration is committed to a vibrant and coordinated strategy of Mars exploration and planetary exploration more generally, and continuing America's leadership here on Earth 
and throughout the solar system. So congratulations again, and long live American curiosity. Thank you.